and welcome to another episode of It's News To Me. I'm your host, Anna Cahill, and today, VATV has a scoop on the top world and local news, including Russia's imposed sanctions on imports and a warning from the Health Department about a possible botulism risk in VR Green Farms jarred products. In world news, Israel has offered to extend a three-day truce with Gaza. However, the Palestinian group Hamas has not yet responded. So far, more than 1,800 Palestinians, mostly civilians, have died since the conflict between Israel and Hamas began, whereas only 67 Israelis, mainly soldiers, have perished. The disparate number of casualties is due mostly to Israel's Iron Dome, which is capable of intercepting rockets fired from the Gaza Strip. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has blamed Hamas for the civilian casualties, stating Hamas used civilians as human shields. After having successfully destroyed tunnels connecting Israel and Palestine being used by Hamas, Israel withdrew its ground troops from Gaza and stationed them at the border. Hurricane Azel and Hurricane Julio threaten Hawaii. The last cyclone in Hawaii, Hurricane Iniki, which hit in 1992, killed six and caused over $2 billion worth of damages. Hurricane Azel is expected to hit first, and Hurricane Julio will touch down about two days after. Residents are being asked to prepare seven-day emergency preparedness kits, including non-perishable food and water. A U.S. Major General has been killed by a man dressed in an Afghan army uniform at Camp Karga, located outside the Afghan capital, Kabul. The Major General was identified as Harold Green and was the senior officer with the International Military Command. General Mohammad Zahir Amizi, an Afghan military spokesperson, stated the shooter was a terrorist in an army uniform. The man was killed when soldiers returned fire. President Putin has blocked certain agricultural imports in response to countries placing sanctions on Russia over the crisis in the Ukraine. The sanctions will not be imposed on all foreign imports. Instead, President Putin intends to create a list of products that will be limited or banned. The sanctions are believed to negatively affect foreign exporters over the Russian economy. An official from Russia's agricultural and veterinary watchdog was quoted saying that all of the U.S.'s agricultural products would be added to the list, which could result in a loss of almost a billion euros. And now, let's head over to Bill McGrath with the Municipal Minute. Hi, I'm Bill McGrath, the City Administrator, and this is the Municipal Minute segment of It's News to Me. Because it's summertime, we have a lot of construction going on. I'd like to tell you a little bit about that and some other things happening in the city in the next couple of weeks, the next couple of months. Uh, we're about ready to put the 2014 street program out for bid. And when we get done with that and announce the uh, lowest uh, price contractor, we will put out the list of the streets that will be done. Some of this depends on exactly the amount of the contract. We have a fixed amount of dollars to spend on this program. So after we get the uh, bids in, we may have to go back through that list, but we'll announce the neighborhoods and streets that'll be impacted and when they'll be impacted. You know, we apologize for the disruption uh, that this may cause for some people, but it's necessary for us to keep the streets in working order. We're doing some other work downtown. We're about done with the design to increase the parking at the yard stop, which is at the southeast corner of River and Wilson Street. Uh, one of the reasons for that necessary expansion is the success of the businesses on North River Street, especially the uh, addition of Gaetano's Restaurant, which is opening on August 5th at the corner of River and Wilson Street, uh, diagonally from across from the art stop. Uh, be sure to try it. Uh, they've got a very successful restaurant operation in Forest Park, and we're very pleased that they uh, chose Batavia to uh, set up their second restaurant. They have a really nice outside uh, section on River Street as well. Uh, we're proceeding with uh, phase one engineering for the Main Street reconstruction. If you recall, Main Street is going to be totally reconstructed from Van Nortwick to Water Street in the summer of 2016. This will be a major project. Uh, there will be uh, detour routes. Uh, we will be working with all the neighborhoods to, and the people who live there to make sure that they have adequate access. But at the end, I think that you'll like the result. We are not widening the street at this time. 
We want to leave our parkways, uh, leave our trees that we have there now, uh, but it'll be a nice smooth surface with new sidewalks, new utilities where necessary, and um, we're really excited about this, that uh, the street really needs the work. Uh, additionally, we'll use that uh, project as a, a reason to help with the uh, uh, handicap accessibility, especially at the northwest corner of Batavia Avenue and Main Street, which has that double curb, which is really difficult for people, especially people with kids or strollers, to uh, get up and around that. So that'll all be completed with this project in 2016. We're about to uh, go to the uh, City Council for approval of the contract for the pedestrian crossings. We were lucky enough to get a grant to put in several uh, lit pedestrian crossings, uh, several on across Batavia Avenue and uh, one on Route 25, and I think they'll make life a lot easier for uh, people getting in and out of the downtown. We are also about done with the work uh, under the Safe Routes to School project, uh, under which we received another grant, and we're working at Rotolo Middle School, Alice Gustafson, and H.C. Storm. That uh, project, those projects should be done by July, except for a new pedestrian bridge uh, on Hart Road that uh, is in connection with the bike path. There's some uh, low areas there where it crosses uh, Batavia Creek, and uh, that'll be done when the prefab bridge comes in sometime in October. Uh, in terms of downtown and more streetscape, we're currently working on the uh, engineering for Houston Street between Island Avenue and Batavia Avenue, which is scheduled to be uh, done next summer, 2015. Again, we'll be working with all the area businesses and with the Park District especially to make sure that everybody still has safe and convenient access to not only the businesses, but to uh, the Park District, the Depot Pond, and the Riverwalk. You may have asked yourselves what the strange uh, structure is at the corner of Island and Wilson Street. Uh, right now it's five green cast iron pillars uh, which uh, just had the pavers put around them yesterday. That is going to be a historic uh, display in honor of our small businesses, uh, in honor of our foundries, our quarries, and uh, the, really the people who uh, did business in Batavia from around the turn of the century and through the 30s and 40s. Um, the pillars were salvaged by the Shumway Foundry family from a building that was torn down in 1978, which was uh, part of the Art Stop corner, and they were kept for many years. They uh, very graciously donated those to the city in order for us to come up with this uh, display. The pavers that are going to be at the base of it are from uh, Wilson Street, which were picked up during the Wilson Street project. Uh, there's going to be some limestone blocks uh, placed around the uh, display, and those were salvaged when we uh, picked up the remnants of the 1909 bridge across the river to put in the current bridge. Uh, lastly, there will be two large display panels with historic photographs of the people and the businesses that were so important to the development of downtown. And we do have a few pictures of the building from which these uh, cast iron columns came from. So we're really excited about the project. We call it Storehenge and uh, we hope that you'll like it. We're trying to create a lot of places in the downtown where uh, you can uh, look and see things that are of interest to you, but also uh, take a few minutes and have a conversation with uh, your friends if you'd like to. Uh, I think I've talked before about Art in Your Eye. It's moved from this August to September. It'll be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Friday night will be a special uh, new evening for Art in Your Eye, uh, and that'll have uh, live music, a beer and wine tent. There'll also be uh, music in the beer and wine tent on Saturday and Sunday this year. We're really excited because we've uh, struck a partnership up with the uh, Penrose uh, Brewing Company of Geneva, which has some very strong Batavia connections, and they are going to be uh, furnishing the craft beer for the festival.
And as always, there'll be a terrific fine art show and a children's area, a city hall art show for our local artists and other activities uh, that you'll be able to enjoy and come down to the festival for the afternoon or the morning and hopefully uh, dine at one of our area restaurants. That's September 19th through the 21st. Uh, the Main Street that's uh, organizing it this year is still looking for volunteers. So you can go to the uh, uh, Art in Your Eye website, which is artinyoureye.com, or call the Main Street office. I think you'll have a lot of fun. The people who work on it are very enjoyable people. And uh, you see a lot of your friends coming down to the festival. So it would be terrific to have some more volunteers on that. So that's about all for this uh, week's edition of the Municipal Minute. And hope you have a safe and fun summer. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. The San Antonio Spurs have made history by appointing Becky Hammond as coach, making her the first full-time female coach to work in the NBA. Hammond is currently a member of the WNBA's San Antonio Stars. However, she plans to retire after the season. Russia has given Edward Snowden permission to reside in the country for three more years with the right to travel abroad. Snowden fled the U.S. in 2013 after he had leaked details about the National Security Agency's surveillance and telephone tapping operations. U.S. leaders have accused Snowden of damaging national interest in harming the country's security and have since attempted to impose restrictions on the NSA's electronic surveillance activities. The CDC has issued a level one activation in response to the current Ebola outbreak. The outbreak is believed to have killed 932 people in the African nations of Liberia, Sierra Leone, Nigeria, and Guinea. Two American aid workers have been returned to the U.S. after becoming infected with the virus. Other American volunteers in infected countries are being returned to the U.S. in order to stop the spread of the virus. The CDC sees this outbreak as a long and serious one and is taking necessary precautions to combat its spread. In local news, the Kane County Health Department has issued a few warnings and recalls to local consumers. VR Green Farms is recalling jarred products, specifically pine nut basil pesto, pickled farm mix, old world tomato sauce, sun-dried tomatoes and olive oil, Tuscan grilling sauce, and pasta sauce due to a possible botulism toxin contamination. Symptoms of botulism include double or blurred vision, drooping eyelids, and a dry or sore throat. These symptoms can progressively descend into paralysis. Further recalls include the Wawona Packing Company of Cutler, California. The company is expanding its voluntary recall of whole white and yellow peaches, white and yellow nectarines, plums, and pluots due to a potential Listeria monocytogenes contamination in the facility. Listeria monocytogenes is a bacterium that can cause serious and sometimes fatal infections in people with weakened immune systems, as well as young children and the elderly. Symptoms include high fever, severe nausea, stiffness, and abdominal pain. Come out to the Peg Bond Center on the Riverwalk Friday, August 15th, to catch the final performance in the Music Matters Summer Concert Series. The concert will showcase the band Blues Night featuring Brother John. The band, whose leader has played with Eric Clapton, Steve Miller, and the Black Crows, will begin their performance at 7.30 p.m. In other local news, two Aurora women were arrested outside the White House Thursday, July 31st, during a protest of federal immigration policies. These women, Rev. Deborah Tinsley Taylor and Rev. Alka Lyle, were among 112 clergy and laypersons arrested by D.C. police. Those arrested were charged with trespassing on the White House sidewalk. I was in Washington, D.C. to join with faith and immigration leaders from across the nation, Rev. Taylor said. Our goal was, and continues to be, to actively pray for affirmative relief and the expansion of the program of deferred action from deportation of children who have grown up in this country. While members of the protest were arrested, 600 to 700 people chanted and sang songs in support at Lafayette Park across Pennsylvania Avenue. Have you ever been curious about how Batavia High School affords uniforms and other sports equipment? You may be surprised to hear that the funding for these extracurricular necessities is paid for through the Batavia Sports Boosters. If you're looking for a great way to support the Bulldogs, the Sports Boosters is a great place to start. The Boosters award 10 $1,000 scholarships every year to student athletes, and they supply most of the uniforms for Rotolo Middle School and Batavia High School. The Boosters also pay 
for a portion of out-of-state travel for every Batavia High School team. And last year, the boosters purchased items on Coach's wish list that totaled almost $50,000. How can you help? The boosters offer memberships that help you as well as the Bulldogs. Memberships come in four varieties, basic, premium, crimson, and gold. For more information on these memberships and what they offer, visit the Batavia Sports Boosters website at bataviabulldogboosters.org. And now we go to Sue Gillerlane with the board brief. Hello everyone and welcome to Board Brief. My name is Sue Gillerlane and I'm the Communications Manager for, for BPS 101. As you probably know, the Dell Chromebook 11 laptop is being distributed to all BPS 101 students starting with Rotolo Middle School and um, Batavia High School students this school year. Uh, just to give you a preview of what it looks like, um, as you can see, it's really compact. Uh, it has an 11.6 inch screen. It's lightweight at about 2.9 pounds. It's very durable, it's portable, and it has a six to eight hour battery life. Um, all Google Chrome 8 apps and files will be stored securely in the cloud so there won't be any risk of your students losing any important projects. When the devices are given out at the middle school and high school, each student will get three permanent adhesive labels that will include their first initial, last name, and student ID. Students will apply one label to their device, um, and it will appear right here, one label to their case, and the case it will appear right here um, on the card window, and then one label to their cord, which will also come with the device. The case, as you can see, is really fully padded um, and I'll open it up for you. There are bumper pads at the top of the case by the zippers so that if there's any impact it will definitely um, help break a fall. Uh, the walls are very durable uh, and sturdy and uh, extremely hard and you will be able to fit the device in very snugly so that it won't um, bump around at all in a child's backpack. <laughs> As you can see, the case is form-fitting and the walls are very rigid to protect against um, any impact. The bottom of the case is rubberized for additional um, durability and protection. If you would like more details about the Chromebook, the Chromebook case, insurance options, and safety and security measures, please visit bps101.net. Thanks. The Batavia Park District and Batavia Main Street welcome you to come out to the Green Fair on the Fox Saturday, August 9th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Batavia River Walk. The Green Walk will feature an eco-marketplace, local businesses, organizations, and individuals who will raise awareness on sustainable living, physical fitness, and healthy living. A free Zumba class will also be offered at 10 a.m. Don't forget to take part in the Alternative Transportation Show. Bring your green car, bike, or other transportation to the River Walk where you can park it and show it off. For more information, please contact Robin Soderquist at 630-406-5282, extension 2164, or email robins at bataviaparks.org. And now let's head over to Brittany Kovach with the Park Bench. Hi, I'm Brittany, Marketing and Sponsorship Coordinator at the Batavia Park District. History returns to Batavia at the Civil War Encampment, held Friday, September 12th through Sunday, September 14th. There are countless activities planned. Enjoy a fashion show and a ladies tea party Saturday, September 13th at 1.30 p.m. at the Peg Bond Center. Come and drink tea and learn about the social graces of this Victorian era. The latest 1860s fashions will be discussed and seen on our women reenactors. This is fun for all ages and remember to BYOTC, bring your own teacup. Come check out the U.S. Signal Corps on Saturday, September 13th at 8 p.m. on the Riverwalk. Parents and students will learn how to send signals over great distances during war with our Signal Corps demonstrations. Learn and practice the 1844 Morse Code of Flags. Also, visit the Depot Museum caboose on Saturday, September 13th at 1 o'clock p.m. Watch the reenactment of President Lincoln's famous last speech, which stirred the hearts and minds of his fellow Springfield residents. To learn more about all of the activities offered at the Civil War Encampment, go to www.bataviaparks.org or call 630-406-5274. Hope to see you there. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of It's News to Me. Check out our website at mybatv.com where you can find most of our programming. And be sure to like us on Facebook 
and subscribe to our YouTube channel at BATV 1017. Don't forget to stay up to date with BATV through our new monthly newsletter and be entered in a drawing for a $25 gift card. On behalf of Claire and myself, I'm Anna Cahill, and that's news to me. Hey, that's news to me!